In our last lesson, we learned that function notation is really just a fancy way of saying the rule for my function machine is this. So if I say the rule for my function machine is 2x minus 3, that's really the same thing as saying every y is equal to twice its x minus 3. So we can see that this function notation is directly related to this form of the equation. And therefore, it will not come as any surprise that a linear function is defined as f at x is equal to mx plus b. It's very related, very close to y equals mx plus b, which by now I think you're pretty clear on that this is a linear function or equation because its graph is a line and in this particular notation the y-intercept is equal to b and the slope is equal to m. I'm fairly certain that you're, com you're pretty competent with this and in tonight's homework some of it is as easy as saying given the function I don't know, 1 half x minus 4, what is the slope and what is the y-intercept? Move on to the idea of quadratic functions. Quadratic functions form Q-U-A-D-R-A-T-I-C functions. A quadratic is a function in the form of f at x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, which should look familiar to you. It looks just like a trinomial, the trinomials that we have factored. And in this situation, a can't equal 0. Because if a is 0, that would really just take out this term, and we'd be left with a linear equation. So quadratic functions are in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, a is not equal to zero, where a is the coefficient of what is called the quadratic term, the term that is squared, and b is the coefficient of the linear term, and c is a constant. So the first thing we're going to do is just practice identifying a, b, and c. Often it's quite straightforward. It will just say, for example, f at x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 8. If we did that, and as you can see, 2 is the coefficient of the quadratic term, so a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to 8. Sometimes they might switch up the order on you. It would be like f at x is equal to 4 minus 3x plus, I don't know, 6x squared. In this situation, although it's doesn't, it, it 4 is not a, 6 is the coefficient of the quadratic term. So in this, a would equal 6, b would again be negative 3, and c would equal 4. Sometimes it might just say, I don't know, f at x is equal to 9 minus x squared. Well, in this situation, the coefficient of the quadratic term is negative 1. Since there is no linear term, no term that just has x, b must be 0, because 0 times x is 0, and c would equal 9. Or in the most basic quadratic, f at x is equal to x squared. That would mean that a is 1, b is 0, and c is 0. But I want to really pursue this as a function machine. And we know that the rule of our function is x squared. So what I put in, I square it, and that's what comes out. So if I put in 0, 0 squared is 0. If I put in 1, 1 squared is 1. If I put in 2, 2 squared is 4. And notice it is not going up at a regular interval which would mean it was linear, 
Rather, this is exponential, and this is the reason for that word, the exponential thing. But you have to remember to consider negatives, too. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. So if I were to sketch this, uh, and uh, granted it is just a sketch, I could graph 0, 0 here. 1, 1 would, might be there. Negative 1, 1 might be there. Then 2, 4 is going up exponentially. And 3, 9 would be somewhere around there. But you notice it makes this curvy situation. And that shape is called a parabola. And the graph of all quadratic functions are parabolas. Graphs of all of the quadratic functions are parabolas. It could look like this. It could face downward or it could face upward. And it also, they always have a bendy point which is known as the vertex. Just like always, you know, if I'm talking about the vertex of an angle, it's the place where it bends. And notice it's either the very top point or the very lowest point. So let's talk about a little bit more about parabolas. All quadratic functions, the graphs, quadratic, here, how should I say this? The graph of any quadratic function quad oops can't spell quadratic functions graphs I have to do the are parabolas and now we're going to look at the connection between the particular functions and what their parabola looks like. In the func so we know that f at x in a, a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. a isn't zero, so we can, as soon as we see this thing here, we know we've got a quadratic function, and therefore the graph is a parabola. So if a and what I mean by a is this one, the quadratic, the coefficient of the quadratic term. If a is positive, the parabola opens upward. And you can think of it like it smiles. So it would look like that something like that. And there's the vertex right at the bottom. And because it has a lowest point, anything that smiles or opens upward has a lowest point, that means it has a minimum or lowest value of the function. And that, and since we know that the y-coordinate is what determines up and down, the y-coordinate of the vertex is a minimum value. Or lowest of the function. Similarly, when A see if I can fit this. If A is negative, the parabola opens downward. looking like this. So as you can see, it's got a highest point. And so it, if, it, if A is negative, it frowns. And the y-coordinate of the vertex is the highest point, or is a maximum value. It's maximum because it has a high point if it's shaped like this. So when A is negative, there's a maximum value. When A is positive, there's a minimum value.
features about parabolas that are also important. For example, let's say this is my parabola. I don't know what the equation is. I'm just sketching here. But let's say that the coordinates of this are, I don't know, 4, negative 2. Okay? All parabolas are symmetrical. And they can be divided exactly in half by a vertical line that goes through the vertex. So, all parabolas are symmetrical, and they're divided in half by a vertical line going through the vertex. That line is called the axis of symmetry. Axis always means lines. And it is the vertical line passing through the vertex that divides the parabola and dividing the parabola into two symmetrical parts dividing parabola into two symmetrical and we can actually call them halves. Okay. Now as we know when x is the same, it, that's what makes a vertical line. So if this point is 4, 1, this is 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, so on, 4, 0, 4, negative 1, 4, negative 2. Okay, so always vertical lines have an equation of x equals something. And if it goes through this point, the equation for the axis of symmetry and they are always vertical lines in this case is x equals 4 but in all cases it's x equals the x coordinate of the vertex also in this because it smiles it has a minimum point or minimum value and that's this. So the minimum value of the function is said to be negative 2, and it's a minimum because it's a smiler. And the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals 4. Along, we have to ask ourselves, oh, that's all well and good, but I need to know how to find, find the coordinates of the vertex. Okay, and so for this, we're going to talk about, um, use the, uh, an example of, uh, and I'm going to use the other kind of notation here so you don't get too set on one, function that pairs x with 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. So the first thing we have to do to find the x-coordinate of the vertex you use the formula x equals the opposite of b over 2a and I strongly recommend that you call this the opposite of b. So in this particular problem x will equal now we, you might want to go back and say a is 2 b because 2 is the co coefficient of the quadratic term. b is 4. It's the co coefficient of the linear term. And although we don't need c for this particular endeavor, it's negative 3. Using our formula, the x-coordinate equals the opposite of b. b is 4, so the opposite of that is negative 4. Divided by 2 times a. a is 2 times 2 is 4. So x is equal to negative 1 just like I always have done, we have always done to find the y that goes with an x, we simply plug it in to find the y coordinate. Plug x back into 
the function. So in this case, x is negative 1. So I'm going to say that, and essentially what I'm finding is h at negative 1. It is 2 times negative 1. I'm just plugging it in now. Plus 4 times negative 1 squared. Plus 4 times negative 1 minus 3. Following Gramdas, I know that I do my exponent first. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Minus 3. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Minus 3 is negative 5. So the coordinates of the vertex for this function are negative 1, negative 5. So I don't know the exact, but I do know that it looks something like this. Negative 1, negative 5 would be, I say it's around here. And in that function, a was positive 2, and when a is positive, the parabola smiles, meaning that it has a minimum value. Let's see how symmetrical I can make this. Okay. So, uh, here is my vertex. It is negative 1, negative 5. And it, from this, I can see, oops, not so good here. Anyway, I can see that there is a minimum value, and y always gives me how high or low. So negative 5 is said to be the minimum value of the function. We get that from the y-coordinate minimum value. comes from the y-coordinate of the vertex. And I also know that, that the axis of symmetry is a vertical line going through this point. So if it goes through the point x equals neg uh, uh, the point x equaling negative one, and all vertical lines have an equation of x equals this, you need the x equals. X equals negative one is the axis of symmetry, and we get it from the x coordinate. of the vertex, okay? If you don't have x equals, it doesn't make any sense. This is the equation. So there mean, must be an equal sign. Equation for the axis of symmetry, which is always a vertical line. We'll be doing a little bit more of this tomorrow, especially with graphing, but these are the basics, and we're going to work on them um, for two days.